Thank you all for joining. I do have a lot of stuff I want to show you. I'm actually going to show you the beta software for the release that's coming out in December. So a couple of new things there. So just uh, curious, out of a show of hands, who is currently actually working on Avid Media Composer? Great. Anybody who is not? And be honest, it's okay. All right. So I have some little tools there that I think will help you uh, as well. So uh, the nice thing is, you know, it's all about the tools that you use and how to use it. Of course, Avid has been out there for over 35 years. Is it 35? Um, so it's been built by editors, for editors, great with collaboration. Welcome to my little edit bay here. Unfortunately, I'm just on a laptop, but you can edit on a laptop. You know, so PC, Mac, there are editors that actually will take laptops to set and actually show a cut to the director and then go to their uh, big edit bay with their bin monitor and their edit monitor. So you basically can choose the way that you work. But uh, what you're seeing here is a, a new, I wouldn't say a new look, but you'll notice that your... Uh, composer window with source record is floating, the timeline is floating, your bins are floating. In, in the latest release of Avid Media Composer, we've introduced a new profile. So just out of curiosity as well, you know, we, we changed the UI in 2019. We changed it with bin locking or the, uh, the bin containers and your panels can be docked and locked. So what I want to show you is when you uh, go and create a new user profile, You'll see here that when you are creating a new user, this is the way that you know you set up your keyboard, your windows, you know anything that you want are customized. Because as you start editing and working, you know you may not use a mouse; you might just be using the keyboard to actually function. So I'm going to go in and create a new user. And what I want to point out is we have different settings now for a user profile. How do you want to work? We have standard Media Composer, which basically is the 2019 where you have initially all of your panels are docked and locked to a canvas or a tree. You can pull that off and you can customize it. I'll actually show you what that does. So exactly. So the idea is we know that there are people using other NLEs, other editing software, and they look at Avid and they're like, we don't know how to use that. But I tell everyone, if you know source, record, ins, outs, timeline, you basically know how to use an editing system. It's just getting past some of the other stuff. So First, I want to show you transitioning from Adobe Premiere Pro. And what that does is I'm going to call my new profile PP Mike. And what happens is the entire UI and layout changes to mimic Adobe Premiere Pro. So it is Media Composer, but again, it's just the layout. It's your source record is large on the top. You have your timeline. You have all of your media management down here. And when you go to your settings, you'll see that the keyboard is a Premiere Pro default keyboard. We want you to embrace Avid Media Composer. We want you to easily transition from Adobe Premiere to Media Composer. Again, it's the tools that you use if you want to, you know, if you're going to a lot of television shows or studios here in LA, you will find that knowing Media Composer is a good thing to know. So we want you to do that. And another thing you may notice is when you are going to your settings, if you're using Resolve, we also have a default, default Resolve keyboard as well. So again, we want to bring in people using other NLEs. Now the other option when you are creating a new user profile is Media Composer Classic. It's like a classic car, right? <laughs> Basically, what we're doing is we're saying, if you choose classic, it's going to float your bins. It's going to float your composer window and your timeline just like you had originally with version 2018 and earlier. So what you'll see is I already have one created. So I'm going to change my profile to go back to classic MK. You'll see everything is now going to change. So everything is now floating as designed or as I want. Again, it's all customizing the way you want to work, which is the best thing about working with Media Composer. You'll also notice in between your source record, if you remember those six buttons, bless you, that went away, they're actually back. I mean, the buttons were still there, you just had to map them. So now we brought back those six buttons with the splice in, the tool palette, overwrite, 
uh, source record, trim, and effects. So those are all brought back right here. So again, it's those little things. We want to make it comfortable for people, whether you're starting off with a new version, whether you are coming from a Media Composer Classic, or uh, you're coming from Adobe Premiere. Okay? So let's take a look at a few other things here. Now I am gonna, I'm gonna dive into a few things that you may not know that the software uh, did if you are using it, just as you're working. Now these are all workspaces, and the workspaces are actually set up to actually view you know, a different workspace for editing, color, effects, audio. As you customize new workspaces, which are just the layout of your UI, you can customize it, you can map it to a key so things will change as you work. But one thing I wanna point out which is interesting is people start moving between these workspaces is how do you want the UI to react? And by going into the user settings here again in the interface, I just wanna point out something that a lot of people didn't know. In the lower left hand corner, when moving to a workspace, do I want to load the last known state or the last saved state? So this is interesting. A lot of people are like, when I go in between the workspaces, it doesn't go back to the way that I wanted it, the way that I saved it. That's because the setting might be changed. So if you find that's happening, please go in and check your, when moving to a workspace, how is that reacting? The last known state is the last state that it was. But the last saved state is when you save a workspace and layout, it'll actually go back to that. Just something that I like to point out every now and then. Okay? Let's take a look at some other functions and features in the latest release. And again, this is a beta version that I will show you some other things uh, that are available or will be available. But as assistants are working or as people are working with different media, how many times have you uh, gone in to subclip different clips, but every time you create a subclip, it's each one individually? We've built in a new batch subclip creation tool. So if I take a look at these clips right here, and if you didn't know, if you hold down Alter Option, it actually brings up these little sub monitor windows. So you still have other little source windows where you can actually bring these up if you'd like, just again, some really fun things. But you'll see that each of these clips have mark ins and outs on them. Another fun thing I'd like to bring up every now and then, because again, Media Composer was designed by editors for editors. Does anyone, I'm sure somebody here knows, why the mark in and out are shaped like that? If you didn't know this, it's a thumbnail. Because in the days of film editing, you grabbed your strip of film, you said, here's the in point, here's the out point. I see some surprised faces, but yes, those are thumbnails to mimic film editing. So a little bit of trivia. So now I have these little uh, marks where I have my in and out for these clips. I can now go in and select all of them, right click, and you'll see batch create subclips. In this window here, this is actually letting me choose, do I want to create a subclip of the entire clip? Which sometimes, depending on the workflow, you may want to do. If you don't want to affect the original clip, a lot of assistants or a lot of editors will just subclip the entire clip. And you'll also see here, including tracks. If these clips had audio, you could actually choose which audio track you also want to have subclipped with it. So you can define all of that. Plus, you can go in and uh, retain your marks or retain markers. So if there are markers in there, they'll actually have those applied. But now if I just say I want to use based on marks, hit OK, I just subclipped all of those clips automatically. And I can even take these clips now. If you didn't know this, you'll see here that my D subs bin is closed. We can now take clips from a bin and drag and drop them to a closed bin. There was a little clap. <laughs> So again, these little things that help with the process. I don't have to open up the bin and then drag it. You can actually drag things to a closed bin. All right. Let's jump into some, uh, some new technology that we also added. I mean, Mike mentioned AI. Does anybody AI? It's a term I hear a lot these days, right? So something that we've done is we've taken some great technology. Does anybody use script sync or script-based editing? Uh-huh. <laughs> So we've actually added to that, we've actually changed our technology in the way that we work with 
script sync and phrase find, we've added AI to the name of it. But beyond that, we've actually, we've actually built in an AI powered engine that actually will allow for a lot more technology to be applied to it. So uh, we do have the traditional way of, of course, going in. This is actually a scene from the Orville that somebody nicely went in. Of course, the team went in and actually used script sync and script based editing to go and mark this up. Interesting, this scene only has one word said in the entire thing. All the rest of this is just visual effects, but they actually used it with script-based editing to go in and just mark that up. And if you haven't seen this, like you'll see here that he says Isaac right here. Did you know that you can actually, you know, grab those marks and when you hit play, It'll go and start playing, and you can tab to each different take. We should be hearing this if the audio can be brought up. Isaac? There you go. Isaac! So, so hitting tab will now let you take Isaac! and listen to every run of that. So that's really great for, you know, the director or for anybody who's editing. Listen to every take once it's in there. All right? Now, this is with the script. You import the script, the text file, into Avid Media Composer, and you line it manually or using script sync to automatically go in and sync it by the audio. But something that we've done recently in the latest release is we added a preview of script sync AI. Ooh. Now watch what this does. So we have some media. I have some great interviews of some editors talking about what they like about editing, how they got their start. So here we have uh, Susan Vale, the editor of Hacks. I'm gonna go in and right click on Susan's clip and there's an option, I can't uh, zoom in and show it I don't think. Nope. So yeah, create script from clip has gone in and created a transcription of that clip. A transcription. Now what's really great about this, now it does have to process. The reason why it came up so fast is because I've done this several times. But once the transcription is done, it takes like maybe a few minutes for 10 minutes of video maybe. And what this now has is her entire interview and each little mark here is every sentence that was being said automatically. This is also not going to the cloud for the transcription. This is all happening local to your system. Okay? So if I want to go to the part where she says, and so eventually I realized I was always using those commands together. I simply double click right here and it takes me to. Open the scene bin. And so I eventually realized I was always using those two, those two commands together. And so those were, I think the first. Okay. So it actually will take you to that dialogue. And if you didn't know this, and this is something that's been in the software for years with script based editing is I'm going to start off with a blank timeline. Just clear this out. And you can start editing from a script or a transcript into your sequence. All you're going to do is hold down a modifier. So I'm going to start off with, uh, let's say, but I was a twin and my sister and I did commercials. So if I hold down a modifier, which is control alt on a PC, Command, Alt, or Option on a Mac. I double click. That's my first edit. Right now, it's at the end of that edit. I can go to another one. Let's go to, and so Avid is definitely my language of choice. Well, let's add that one. So I hold down the modifiers, double click. That's edit number two. So you'll see that I can now put together a rough cut. Commercial. We're not kids. And oh, why there's a delay here. That's really weird sister and I did commercials when we were kids and we even did a double commercial. And so I have it is definitely. So you can see there's a cut right from that point. So being able to do that from the timeline is huge. Now, a little feature that will be added to the next release that I can show you is I'm going to right click on Susan's clip again. I'm going to choose export transcript. No one else has seen this yet. I know we're live. 
Don't tell anyone. <laughs> but it's, it will be in the software where if I say export transcript, let's go ahead and put it on the desktop. I'll call it, type in Susan. Did it do it? I think because I had it done before. Let me export Susan 1. What happens is it's going to actually create an export of that transcript with timecode. Yay! <laughs> All right. Really, really cool there. So if I went to any of those time codes, that would be exactly where that line is. So again, this technology with the AI power that we're adding into Media Composer is going to let us do a lot more advancing really, really quickly. It's our own technology. Now, as far as the transcript, what about if you have different languages? Watch this. So I have a clip here that has actual multiple languages. Check. <laughs> so if I want to go in and look at that same clip, right click and say create uh, script from clip, look at that. We support 21 languages that it goes in and actually will create the transcript from that. Uh, will it recognize multiple speakers? We're looking into that. <laughs> Again, a lot of, once we started developing all of this, there were a lot of, you know, things that will be following, definitely. Now, let's take this a step further. Uh, Script Sync AI is the new name of it. You'll see under Script Sync, Script Sync AI is the option. And then we have Phrase Find. Phrase Find will actually go in and let you type in a word or phrase, and it will find any clip where somebody has said that word or phrase. So, Command F on a PC, Control, or a command F on a Mac, Control F on a PC. And you'll see here in this window on the far right side, Phrase Find AI will come up when I type in. I want to find out where somebody's saying the word helpful. So type in helpful. If you've used Phrase, has anyone used Phrase Find before? A couple people? You used to have to download a language pack to actually be able to search. You'll notice that that language is not selected here anymore because it knows what the language is. So now if I type in helpful and I hit phrase find AI, it found 132 instances where it thinks somebody said the word helpful in all of my media in the project. And the nice thing about uh, the AI part of phrase find is you get a new transcription column. We can actually see where the word is in context to the sentence that's being said. Because again, 130, 1,000 you know, instances, however many. If I want to go to the part where uh, Jeff Ford, the editor of a lot of Marvel films, says the tracking tools are easy to use and incredibly helpful. Double click, takes you right to Jeffrey saying. And incredibly helpful. Um, we do a lot of reshooting. So again, a really great tool. Script Sync AI and Phrase Find AI are part of Media Composer Ultimate and Media Composer Enterprise, or an option if you just have Media Composer. So some really, really great functions there. Um, some other things to point out are, any questions, by the way? One, any, one more question? Anyone? I'm fine. Yes. The, the question was, would there be a way that once you did the Phrase Find, if you could go in and create subclips of everything that you found? Uh, great feature request. We will make note of that. <laughs> But right now, you would actually double-click to bring up each instance uh, separately. Uh, the next function that I want to show you that was added in 2023.8 is uh, if you've ever used the sequence templates, a sequence template, you know, typically when you're starting a new sequence, it's one track of video and two tracks of audio, right? If you go to your settings and look at the sequence template, which is right here, you'll see that you could go in and actually build a template to your liking. So you could actually create something with however many video tracks and audio tracks. The audio could be stereo, 5.1, 7.1, and you could even name them if you want. You'll see sound effects, nat sound, music, dialogue. 
So you can go in and create these templates, but the nice thing about that is once these are created, they can create these at any time. Uh, you'll see that I brought up a sequence that already had it. So if I go into, let me remove some of the information here. Actually, I'll go ahead and select. Let's go back here. There we are. So this sequence currently does not have all those extra tracks added to it. But let's say for a deliverable, whoever you're sending it to, whatever streaming service, they require a certain amount of tracks, certain naming, or just a way to be able to control and see what's happening. So I can go in and right click on the timeline and you'll see apply sequence template. You could choose the template and watch what happens to the left side of the timeline as it now has gone in and updated the timeline to reflect my new changes. But yet it doesn't change your timeline. It's not going to affect what you've done. It's just adding on those extra elements so you now have something that you're not going to have to re-import a sequence and recopy all that stuff back in. It's taking out those extra steps for you, which is great. All right. Also, if you have, let's see if I have markers. I think I do in right here. A lot of markers here for this sequence of the Orville. One thing that we added recently, if you go to your marker window, is a creation date. How many times have you had markers that keep being added during the course of production and you don't know which ones are the most recent ones? Now you can go in and just say, I want to sync, click on creation date, and actually will sort them newest to oldest or whatever you like. Again, all these little features and functions are really nice. And we also have things added to the audio side of the world. So if I go to my audio mixer, you now can go in and change the clip gain of audio to go above 12 dB. I know, right? <laughs> I actually had somebody come up to me at a trade show recently. He's like, the best thing about the new software is I can go higher than 12 dB for audio. Now, it's very important to note here that the slider, fader, slider, I'm not an audio person, fader, <laughs> only goes up to 12, and this is by design. So if I click on the value down here and type in 25, you'll see that you can actually type in values higher. That's because we don't want everyone to keep moving the fader up, making it really high and blowing out, you know, your ears or anything. We want to have that to be a more conscious level change to the audio. And also you'll see that it changes to a very bright yellow, so you know that it's instantly higher than 12 dB as well. <laughs> right? Can everyone see that? Um, so again, another nice feature, and that's not just in the mixer also. You'll see if you go and add in the audio, there's a lot of sound design here in this sequence, which is really great. If you turn on clip gain on your tracks, you can come in here and type in to be higher than 12 dB as well. So again, some nice functions. If you didn't know this also, and again, little tips and tricks I like to talk about every now and then, the fast menu in the audio mixer, you can now map any of these functions to a key. So things like, you know, removing clip gain, adjusting clip gain, setting pan, map it to a key. All right. Let's get into some other, uh, oh, the multi-mix. We uh, introduced in 2022.12, being able to export a Pro Tools session. Is that me? I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> um, a Pro Tools session from Media Composer Ultimate and Media Composer Enterprise. Nice. And uh, Christopher actually has it working over on the Pro Tools side as well there. But what I can show you is if you go to export, you'll see that the options now provide the ability to choose a Pro Tools session directly from Avid Media Composer. And it actually creates a .ptx file with video and audio in one. 
Nice. Yeah. So what you'll see here is, you know, you have your Pro Tools session, you have two tabs for video details and audio details, but what's really cool also is markers. Because if you have markers in your sequence, these markers will be seen in Pro Tools. You will have them. You could actually, you know, if you color code them, you can actually choose which markers you want to have built into the PTX file. You'll see here for video, we can export a video mix down. We can link to audio. If you're on Nexus and you have Pro Tools and Media Composer on the same setup, you could just link to the media. You don't have to do an export. Or you can pack and go. You can consolidate it. But I'm going to say just do a video mix down. You can choose MOV or MXF. DNX, DNxHR, Apple ProRes, if you didn't know this, in recent versions of Media Composer on APC, you can export ProRes media. Okay. Choose your uh, compression, choose your raster size, and on the audio side, again, copy, link, or consolidate. If you do have media that's already been created from a previous sequence, there is a button that says ask to exclude audio media from the previous sequence. So it's not duplicating media every time you do a Pro Tools session export. Plus we've added being able to do a multi-mix. If anybody has seen this before, the multi-mix tool in Media Composer was added years ago, but that was only for mix downs. The idea of the multi-mix is you can actually set up multiple mixes of your audio so you're not having to do multiple passes one after the other. I need two stereo pairs of this and a 5.1 of this. Build it into the single multi-mix window. You can say I want to add, I want these to be a 5.1, adding that, saving it, and now this mix is actually put into the Pro Tools session as well. So the PTX file is created. You double click on that or you open it up in Pro Tools. All of the tracks come in. You get a video track in Pro Tools with the mix down clip. You get a cut track. Even though it's a single clip of video, the cut track in Pro Tools will take you to every cut in the sequence for reference automatically. Ah. <laughs> and you also get a uh, rendered folder track, an unrendered folder track, and a rendered only folder track of audio. So audio suite plugins, key framing, audio ducking, all of that stuff is brought over into the Pro Tools session. And we're working on full round trip where the PT, uh -huh, uh -huh. that was your question? Being able to go back and take the PTX file from Pro Tools and open it back up in Media Composer. So hopefully we'll see that soon. All right, let's take a look at a few other things because uh, I do want to open up for some more questions. But uh, we know that a lot of people have workflows and we did a nice little presentation for the PGA on Tuesday night. And this was actually a really cool um, feature that I wanted to highlight is Avid has opened up to other partners. So workflows from other people for dailies, for review and approval, for notes and things like that is uh, the panel SDK. So if you have a partner or somebody who you want to work with, they can actually develop and have a panel inside of Media Composer so you don't have to keep going out outside of the application to do things. So we have two companies that I can show you. The first one is Moxian from Autodesk. So under Tools, you'll see Moxian as a selection here. The Moxian panel comes up inside of Media Composer and now, depending on my login and how I'm set up, I'll have access to the media inside the windows right here. So let's go and take a look at, um, let's see, I have some royalty-free shots here. Because this is within Media Composer, I would be able to open up a bin and drag and drop from the panel into my bin to bring it into my project. I wouldn't have to go out of the application, make a folder, take it into a drive, and then bring it over. It's done within the application. Yes. Uh, as far as linking or not, um, I don't believe so. I'm not going to try it because it does have to download the clip and it's going to bring up a bar and we're going to sit here and wait and take up time. <laughs> but 
That's a good question. We could take a look at that afterwards. I don't know if it will, but the nice thing about this is we're relying on the manufacturers to do a lot of that development. To do that, we're just giving them the window into Media Composer. The other application that I can show you at this point is Pix from X2X. So if we take a look at the Pix web page, you'll see here that I do have some media that is in Pix. Now this could be camera raw files that has a bunch of metadata. This could be clips that have notes. So these clips right here are from Ari. Here I have you know, a, some clips that are our, is our footage that I put some notes on. But if I go into the panel inside of Media Composer with Pix right here, Pix allows us to do three things. Once I log in, Pix will let me create a bin. The cool thing about this is, again, we don't know what columns of metadata are required depending on the media that we're bringing in. And the assistant or anybody who's creating the bin is going to have to go in and manually create columns to uh, be set up for the uh, editorial. What Create Bin does is it looks at a clip. Let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to look at a source pick. I'm going to look at one of those RE files. Come on. We are using key codes Wi-Fi here. Here we are. So if everybody's on, please, a few people shut off here. So we're going to take a look at the columns of metadata. These are the RE files. And you'll see what happens at the, on the bottom of the PIX window is it's actually showing me the metadata that's coming over from that file. Now I can go in and say create a bin name. We'll call it editor L1. Hit create bin. Here is my editor L1 bin, which is brought up. And you'll see as I open up that bin, all of those extra metadata columns are automatically built for me. Again, we're trying to streamline the process of working with that media. The other options available within the PIX window is syncing notes. So if there are comments from the PIX file, here I'll open up the clip right here. So these are comments that I made on this piece of media, but that was done on the PIX side. I can now go into the sync notes. So I choose the source file from PIX, which is right Come on. Actually, we'll choose this file here. And then the target file, because this is within Media Composer, it's a panel, I can actually drag and drop the clip over here, and it brings in that referred file that I'm looking at. So I want the notes to come up on V1. I want the notes to be colored magenta. The notes are right here. I click Start Sync. And we now, when I load in that clip, you will see the magenta markers from that file. All right? Nice. I saw a lot of this. <laughs> good, good, good. And then lastly, the third thing that you'll be able to do with PIX, and again, we hope to see more development with this, is syncing metadata. So this is taking information from Media Composer and bringing it back to PIX. So metadata, let's say on this clip right here, you'll see that the tape ID is XX33, the comment is PGA3. I did this the other night. I'm actually going to change the tape ID to be KCM1, and I'm going to change the comment to be Editor's Lounge. All right? So now, when I go back to my metadata, the source file for Media Composer is right here. Drag and drop it. The target file back in PIX is right here. Select that. You'll see here in the bottom of the window, my metadata has changed for to tape ID KCM1. Hit sync. And when I go back to PIX through the web page and take a look at that file, we 
We'll see when I scroll down to take a look at it. Come on. The metadata, the tape ID has changed, and the comment has changed. So again, we're opening it up to other applications and workflows. We have a bunch of partners that have signed up so far. A lot of people at our latest trade show were like, how do we get to be part of this? We want more people to open up because we know everybody has different workflows. So the panel SDK is really, really nice. And lastly, before I open up, and again, I could spend a lot of time doing this, but we are very limited. I will be here after the panel as well to answer questions, is uh, showing you something else new that is coming up called Avid Huddle. We showed this at uh, IBC recently and also at NAB in its beginning stages. It's not out yet, but imagine you're sitting in the edit bay, the editor's sitting there, and they want to share the output of Media Composer to somebody else, but they're cross-country or they're in a park and they don't have access to a system, but they have their phone. What we're doing is we're using Microsoft Teams to log in to Media Composer and using SRT, Secure Reliable Transport, from Media Composer to send the output across Teams. So what I'll do here, let me go ahead and launch Teams to get started. Launching into my Teams application. Hello. We'll join that. All right. And now let me go ahead and load this sequence right here. And I'm going to launch Avid Huddle. Again, this is a preview. This isn't out yet. We want to show people what we are doing because, again, it's a great application. Imagine the time that's saving from exporting a file, sending a link out, getting a whole bunch of different notes, looking at all that independently, waiting for feedback from somebody. You can actually do it while you're in a team session. We'll log into the system. Did I spell it? Or maybe it's wrong password. Nope. Cap locks. There we go. So I'm logging in to Teams. I'm enabling Avid Huddle. And then when I launch into Teams and start a session, I can start sharing the output of Media Composer. So I'm going to turn on SRT, which is part of the timeline. I'm going to enable it. And let's first see if we're getting the information out of the system. So right now, it's just me in the session. Whoa. And it's playing out. Here I am. It's playing out of Media Composer in this window. But I'm going to invite some friends who are currently here in the audience from Avid. So I'm going to go to people here. Let's go ahead and I think Sarah is here. Sarah Priestno. Request to join. We have Joe Vandenberg. Have him. So basically, Teams is now going out and calling them on their phones and make sure you turn uh, mute your phone, but turn on your camera so we can see where you are. So there's Joe, there's Sarah, and if I hit play, they'll be able to see what's being played out on my system on their phones. But what's also cool is the time code is right here, so I could stop on any frame, let's say right here. That's not what they're seeing, and we can have a, a little chat. You know, what do you think of this? You'll see Joe. <laughs> All right, Joe. Now realize I could delete that, but I won't. But anyway, you'll see that he's actually making a comment from his phone and adding an annotation to the system here. And we could even go in and start drawing. So we could be talking and I could say, All right, you know, let's highlight this. Is this a good area here? You know, we could do a little snapshot of that. But the idea is this is a live session that we are actually seeing and working with. And what's really cool is once we go in and 
Let me just uh, move down a little bit. I'm going to add another comment myself. I like this. Need to be able to spell right. What? There we go. When I add that, that annotation is there. When I close out of the session, it's going to save a summary of those annotations that I can import back into Media Composer as markers. All right. So uh, thank you, Sarah and Joe, for uh, joining my session here. Uh, so stop sharing. And then... Again, Avid Huddle is just a really great way to be able to share. And this could be used for anybody. It could be, you know, training departments or uh, creative services or, you know, again, editorial, just to be able to do that, you know, all live at any time. And you could be in a team session and say, hey, why don't I just show you the cut? And you could launch into the session as well. So question. Uh, the other side, does it have to be a Teams client? The answer is yes. So you will have to have Teams on there, but the license that is purchased is only for the person who's actually logging in and sending out the stream. So as long as Teams is available on the everyone else's system, they'll be able to be part of the Avid Huddle session. Um, again, Media Composer, very beefy. I could spend hours going over things. We have a lot of tutorials online to help you as well. A lot of great resources. Uh, there are some other colleagues here from Avid as well to answer any questions that you may have. I'll be here later. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much.